And I have a question for you, sort uh -huh. of unrelated to the this knit along, but I just uh -huh. finished the scarf for the um, the barn box, and my cast on was really tight, so I couldn't I couldn't block out the corners. Is there a, a way to deal with that, or do I just have a different effect? Um, which scarf? The, I'm sorry, uh, I, the, the my bird in the thicket. Oh, oh, the um shawl. Oh, yeah, the shawl. Sorry. Um, yeah, I don't have a fix for that. Um, except that you should have cast on more loosely. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. So I've learned. Yeah, something. when you're casting on the edge, it's important to keep it loose. Um, especially those scallops edges because um, you're going to have to block out the scallops if you want that effect, you know. Well, but I'm happy have about you, it. But have, you, have you wet it yet? Is it blocked or? Yeah, it is blocked. I did oh. that last night, so that's how I knew it was way too tight. Um, sometimes when you wet it, it loosens up, you know, but. Not enough. Oh, oh well. It's still pretty. It's just different. <laughs> Figured I would check with the expert to see if there was some alternative that I could, I could modify for the. No, that's one thing. I mean, that's one thing you really can't change. You know, to once you cast on too tight, that's kind of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's a an, a challenge when it's some three hundred stitches to cast on at a whack. Yeah. The thing is, if you know you're casting on at the lower edge of something, it's a good bet that you're going to need to, um, especially a shawl that's shaped. You you almost yeah. can't you almost can't cast on loose enough. You know, I mean, um, or you can't cast on too loosely. Right. Um, it doesn't hurt to overdo it um, because it's going to be lacy on the edge anyway. And yeah. Maybe larger needles for the cast on next time. Would that help? The thing is, the thing is, what makes your cast on tight isn't isn't the needle, but uh, especially if you're doing a long tail or a two stranded cast on, it's that foundation underneath the cast on along the bottom of the needle where you're pulling the yarn for each stitch. When mm -hmm. you pull that yarn, if you pull too tight, it's going to be too tight. So it's good to learn to modulate that um, and to spread your stitches out as you go so that you're leaving more space in between. It, it's worth a look, yeah. even, if, even if you don't want to learn my grandma's cast on, it's worth no, a I look actually at the, know that one. Yeah, if you look at the video, there's a, um, I'm able to demonstrate <laughs> with the stitches in my hands what I'm talking about here. And I go to mm -hmm. pretty good length to talk about that very thing where yeah. that that foundation along the edge, which is what you're making with your left hand um, mm -hmm. strand, is that's the part that needs to be loose. It won't do you any yeah. good to use a bigger needle unless you're also doing that. Okay. So keeping that nice and stretchy. Yeah, I need to work on that because I have been using your grandma's cast on a lot more than I ever used to, but I'm when I'm doing that many stitches, it's it's so much easier just to do a knitted cast on. <laughs> yeah, and and even knitted don't have cast to do any on, math. Yeah, even a knitted cast on, you can. Another trick for that is when you do the knitted cast on or cable cast on, when you put the new stitch on the left needle, don't tighten it up until you get the second needle in there for the next stitch. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, if you tighten okay. it up, if you tighten it up and then begin to make the next stitch, it will be as tight as you make it. But if you leave it kind of hanging, dangling, kind of loose, mm -hmm. then put your second needle in. It's it's much easier to keep it loose, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. And also, sp again, spreading the stitches out along the needle as you're casting on will automatically put some extra yarn in between them. So that's another hint. But all these hints go back to like doing it right in the first place. <laughs> oh yeah. But... 
presumably I will do another shawl that starch at that end. So this yeah. is good experience. Yeah, it's always helpful, especially um, when you see the shawl, is, the design has scallops on the edge. You want to be especially loose so that yeah. you can really, you can block them out and really pretty. Yeah, well, it's still a very pretty shawl, but I'm sort of sad that I don't have those delicate edges. Oh, but I'd well, catch them on something anyway, so this is maybe safer. You'll probably knit another one at some point. So. <laughs> it goes pretty fast, that one. It's surprisingly quick once you get the cast on done and get your stuff yeah. set. It took three times to get the cast on done, which is why I got a little casual at the end. Uh, yeah, I don't know how I ended up with a, a, a correct cast on myself, but I did. Anyway. Anybody have any questions? So oh, we've got, go ahead. go ahead. Not a question, but I'm just happy to report that I um, I'm on stripe one. <laughs> Excellent. The, the fifth time was the charm. And, <laughs> and I'm absolutely loving it. The yarn, I'm a few weeks behind, <laughs> but um, I love the yarn. I mean, the springiness, the resilience of it. It's just... Um, it's that's the merino Romney, I think, mix. Yeah, the can. And, um, I'm going to take advantage of the catch up week and try to get all caught up. I mean, I'm getting close to switching to the second color, but um, I want to, you know, make make progress. But I put in stitch markers every two pattern repeats, and that way I haven't goofed up at all. And so, um, it's kind of a beginner trick, but I needed it. So if I need support and assistance, then I need support and assistance, whatever I it's, need. It's your knitting. You do what helps you, yeah. you know, and what makes you enjoy it more. But anyway, I love the, the lacy parts and, um, and I just can't wait to hear more about uh, this week's yarn too. That's why I tuned in today. So uh -huh. thank you. Anybody else have anything they wanna say or um, contribute? or ask. I want to ask, um, where, where is my grandma's um, YouTube? Cause I have looked and looked and looked, and I cannot find it. I, I mean, and I, I know how to go through things. So I, I don't, I don't if know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know. Uh, if you're on this spot, are you on the knit spot YouTube channel? I was, yes. Can you search within that? And it, it really just type in my grandma's cast on and Oh, okay. I'll do that. I'll, I'll post it in the notes right now. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks, Catherine. That's helpful, too. Yeah. Just give me a sec. It'll be there. <laughs> yeah, take your time. So hi everybody. I last hi. time I was talking about um, missing a stitch, and I kept looking at my project because I'm I'm really careful to count the repeats, and I just had a sneaking feeling. So at the end of the session last week, I found my drop stitch. <laughs> 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 which was very satisfying and like a very good yarn it stayed right where it was but I did I did decide not to try and fudge it I went back the 20 rows and redid it so wow you get a prize <laughs> <laughs> really no <laughs> no <laughs> you get a star How, how's that okay <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a prize to give out that's the thing <laughs> Uh, I didn't know it was such a, um, I guess it is very satisfying to find your mistake. Yeah, and, and the thing <laughs> is, if it, if it sits right there, it's harder to find because yeah, it, it, was, it, it does a really good imitation of a stitch that's not dropped at that point. Yeah. yeah. I um, found that I uh, was, I just cast on for um, Roger that, it's a nice blanket from Ian 
And I went through and I did all the ribbing and I'm starting on the, the pattern. And I realized I cast on six too many stitches. Oh no. So I just ripped it all out and I'm back to row two. Because <laughs> you can't you can't fudge that. So no, you um, can't fix it. Counting and um loose stitches. I'm also loose uh casting on for peony moon right now. And Thank you very much, Elizabeth, for asking the question because I have never done such a loose cast on in my life. And I think it's gonna help with this um, stole. I think it's a stole. Anyway, thank you guys. Talking about the number of stitches, I am at the last, I think last two steps. Yeah, last two rows of pattern one. So we're, if you're doing the cowl, you, or yeah, at least the cowl, you increase a stitch. So I took that opportunity just to stop and count how many stitches. And I actually have to add four stitches. So <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, if you start skipping around between the stripes, um, you need to set up each, it, you need to use that garter section between to set up for the next stripe. So you need to look at, before you start it, you need to look at the stitch count for that stripe and make sure you've got the right, the right number. Yeah. I'm glad you put those points in there and reminded us of the stitch counts that we need. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna finish my row here and then start talking so, some more about Perindale. Um, so and the other day- we, Are you gonna talk about the farm as well? Yeah, if, okay. if you just give me a sec. Oh yeah, no, I- <laughs> Yeah, I, I, let I, me just finish, yeah, let me just finish what I'm doing and I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll get that, going. I was just gonna review um, for, for anyone who wasn't here the other night, the, we talked about um, the history of the breed and you know, how it came to, how it came about. Um, it is a fairly modern sheep breed having been developed in the mid um, 20th century in New Zealand. And all of that discussion will be in the recorded session, which I, mean, I don't know if it's been uploaded yet, but um, when it has, you should receive an email that it that it has been uploaded to YouTube. For it's there. I, I watched it this morning, Ann. Oh, okay. Oh, Julia. But it, yeah, but it doesn't, you can't see all the things that you were showing. Like the, when you're showing the pictures and everything. Oh, there's really? No the share to, there's oh. no way to see those oh. that I could see on the YouTube video. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't produce the actual videos, so I don't, um, I can ask Zach if he can put those in next yeah. time, because I'm going to show a few more pictures today. Okay. Um, in fact, right now, just to um, clear up, let me just, so just to clear up a point that came up the other night about, you know, when I say a fiber is silky. Um, here's a really nice photo. Hopefully um, it will fill the screen and everybody can see it. So see how the fleece, it's not like a teddy bear fleece that looks like a fuzzy round ball. The, the fleece is actually laying almost in lines. And, um, and it's very flat looking, you know, in that way. So that's the sign of a silkier fiber. It, it's a bit straighter instead of being frizzy. Um, it does, this fiber does have a crimp to it, but not, you know, as tight and fine as, as Merino. So you can kind of imagine looking at this photo that, I don't know if I can, uh, oh, I can. Can you see that where I magnified it a little bit? Um, 
you can kind of imagine that as the sheep runs along even, this fiber might blow around a bit or bounce around a bit. Um, you know, it's just not that frizzy of a fiber. So hopefully that's somewhat helpful in understanding that, what that means. Um, so our, um, we haven't been to this farm. I met the farmer at Maryland. Um, this, our wool comes from a farm in Maryland called Lucky Lane Farm. It's in Whitehall, Maryland. And the, um, and the owner is, um, is uh, Lynn, oh darn it, Roberts. Um, and, and she took, she took possession of this farm in, in, or this flock of Parendales in 2015. But, um, and that's, that's pretty much what I know about the farm. I, I have met the person. She's like totally um, immersed in this, in this breed. She's really fervent about breeding um, colored Parendales. So She's specializing in that real dark fiber that I showed you um, the other day. Let me just, um, for anybody that didn't see it. Um, you know, she likes to get her genetics. Come on. <laughs> I'm trying to connect to this. Hmm. It looks like this got frozen somehow. Maybe it'll, oh, here we go, okay. So that's that's a real, um, you know, that would be considered like a black uh, sheep, but obviously it's got a brown to it. You know, it's it's a black brown. Um, so Parendales can, um, can range from white all the way to this very dark black brown color. Um, it's, it's very interesting. So the first Parendales were brought to North America from New Zealand, about 50 of them in 1977. Um, and the person who imported them um, also um, had her farm in, um, in Montgomery County, Maryland. So, oh, 60 ewes, excuse me. So 60 and 60 isn't a huge flock it's a very good sized flock for a small farm but it's not it's nowhere near you know huge um but it's it's a handful for sure um and she kept those she kept a flock constantly from 1977 to um the 2010s when probably that's when she retired and dispersed her flock um, to a few other people. The Parendale community is super small. And interestingly, in, uh, and I should say in America, where, uh, where as in New Zealand, when we talked about the New Zealand Parendales, it's, it's a widespread um, sheep there. So because of overgrazing and climate change and different factors, Parendale um, continues to grow as the preferred um, sheep in, in New Zealand, where um, we're here, it's still kind of in its infancy as in terms of people who want to raise it. So there are really just a handful of people that, that raise Parendales in the US and all of them are women, which is really interesting to me. Uh, so, um, if you go to the North American Parendale Association, which is, um, I think it's www.parendale.org, um, and you go to the breeders directory, I think there are like four farms listed because that's pretty much all there are. Um, and to be uh, registered, to be able to register your animals as Parendale sheep, they need to be at least... 85% Parendale through the maternal line. 
Um, and to record your sheep, they need to be 75% Perindale. Now, some of the things, some of the breeds that people cross with Perindales, you know, as we talked about in earlier discussions, um, especially in barn box, um, people do crosses with, even with their purebred sheep in order to strengthen the genetics because with 60 sheep coming into the US in 1977 and that flock dispersed and largely inbred to grow the numbers, you're gonna end up with some weak genetics at some point. Um, now they do bring in semen from uh, New Zealand periodically to artificially inseminate sheep, but that's, you know, that's a really expensive thing to do. And so um, it's not something that most farms can do every year. So periodically they will do that, but also periodically they will try to improve on the flocks that they have and create um, lines that are acclimated to specific environments in the US by crossing in other breeds of sheep. For instance, um, and, and you know, uh, to put this in context, from this one flock of sheep, which was dispersed, um, the and only recently dispersed. So in the 2010s, that was only you know a decade ago. Um, some sheep stayed in Maryland. Some went to California. Um, there was a woman in California who imported some of her own sheep from New Zealand, and then some ended up in U in Utah. So. So those are vastly different uh, climates to raise sheep in. And there might be reasons to cross breed a little bit to acclimate your sheep to the climate that, that you have. Another thing that one of the women did is she, um, um, one of the women in Maryland crosses her Perindale sheep with um, Cheviot sheep in order to, um, to produce a resulting sheep that, that is really well suited for training sheep dogs. So she's actually got a little operation going where she's, she's, she's breeding sheep that dog trainers can um, buy or, you know, incorporate into their own flocks to better, to train the dogs the best way possible, which I think is really cool. You know, who would have thought, like, I, I just wouldn't have thought of that as an outlet for the product, you know. Um, but being in the community, um, you know, this being their community, they know that these needs are, are out there. So, um, Let's see. So the original flock of sheep um, brought into the US by Norlane Schultz um, was dispersed to, let me look at this. I have to look at this directly. So um, let's see, some were purchased by the Lazy U Farm in Mount Airy, Maryland. Um, she's the person who crosses them with Cheviots in order to um, train border collies. Um, Let's see. Um, and then some, and, and those sheep that are trained, that are raised for sheepdog training, usually end up in the mid Atlantic to New England area. Um, and then some of her um, original flock also sold to, to as starter flocks for um, Seven Hills land and cattle company in California, um, Washington State, Clover Country Farm, and in Utah, and I don't know the name of the farm there. Um, but apparently all of those flocks have since been dispersed. Um, in other words, you know, people retire and, um, and that's what you do with your farm when you retire these days. It doesn't pass down in your family so much anymore as go to someone else who appreciates it better <laughs> or gets sold. Um, 
But most of the purebred Parendales in North America at this point do track back to that original flock um, that, um, that was brought in, um, that was created in California with this woman who in 1989 purchased uh, ewes from, um, that had been brought in by, um, from New Zealand by Norlene. So it's kind of like all very incestuous and connected. So it's, it's, it's very interesting that way. <laughs> um, a couple of people have brought in like rams from New Zealand, um, but many people are turning instead to artificial insemination. So it's just, it's just much easier. Let's see. So that woman in California who created um, a flock which now produces a lot of stud sheep for other flocks, she's a hand spinner herself. Her name is Marta. Um, she she kind of diversified her flock by introducing natural colored um, sheep, which um, which she has bred with a high percentage of Parendale. So by importing um, natural color sheep semen from New Zealand, um, she, she's been able to breed pretty consistently a range of colored um, Parendales. And then, you know, good rams from those flocks get sold to other Parendale producers so that they can begin producing colored fleece uh, or colored sheep um, of their own in different parts of the country. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm just trying to see if there are any other little factoids in these notes that... I think that's pretty much it. So at this point, there are four registered breeders with the North American Parendale Association. Two of them are in um, Maryland. One is in California and one is in Utah, I believe. Um, and ours comes from Lucky Lane Farm in Whitehall, Maryland. And those are the, the pictures that I showed you the other day. Uh, let's see. Let me show you a few more photos. Sorry, my hand keeps, it's hard to keep my hand from covering the camera here. Okay. So this is a picture of the fleece itself. This is a lamb's fleece. And you can see that the, the crimp is still pretty good. Like I, I kind of went on about how silky it is, and, and you know, the fact that it's not tight, it, it's not tight compared to a merino fleece, but being on the fine end of, of a medium grade or a long wool fiber, um, it is a pretty good crimp. And, and you could imagine getting, a, if you're a hand spinner and you're looking at this, you can imagine getting a pretty, a pretty springy yarn from, from this fleece. Um, this is a washed fleece and you can see that what happens here is along the hair shaft, you get different tones of color. So it starts out white closest to the root and it's a little bit yellow on, on the outside and then turns kind of a grayish taupey color towards the tips. Um, and conversely, a dark fleece will be very dark near the root and bleach out a little bit in the middle but then be almost golden at the tips. And this is what we kind of saw in, in our fleece. Um, then when you, when you blend it all together and, and spin it up, the final color um, can appear a lot darker than, it, than you might guess that it would um, on the hoof. Let's see.
this is a picture of a very dark sheet. This looks black, but it's not really black, black. It's, it's got that dark brown color to it. <laughs> I don't know if I can just, um, yeah, I can't just scroll from one picture to the next, but what a handsome, what a handsome dude. <laughs> it's so mm. like, and it's so evenly dark. It's, that's just a gorgeous, um, gorgeous fiber. Let me show you some, here are a couple of lambs, one dark and one light. Look at them. <laughs> I know that silvery one. I think that's, that's more or less the color that our fleeces were on the animal that we thought they were going to be kind of silvery like this with maybe some dark. And, um, but then down at the root, there's a more brown color and, and um, that really influenced the outcome of our, our yarn. How, and how old are they? Those look like they're about, I don't know, maybe between three and six months. I, it's not a full body shot. But um, mm -hmm. here's one that's a new, more of a newborn. Look at the head. <laughs> it's, so, oh, it's so funny looking. Yeah. I know you, you know, you think of lambs with these little narrow faces, but they don't all look like that. It almost looks like a rabbit, <laughs> a rabbit dressed like a lamb. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the mama and the baby. I know pictures of lambs are always worth looking at, right? Um, and here's another shot of like, okay, so this is this is a ram and a ewe, and the ram is kind of um, romancing the ewe here, <laughs> uh, getting ready to do some mating, I think here. But that brown, that kind of golden brown one is a really beautiful color too. Really nice. And you can see, um, you know, some of the pictures we saw the other day, the fleece was shorter and you could see more of the lines of the body. But um, the ram here is a really, a quite a different shape than the U. The U has those curvy, more visible haunches, I guess. Whereas the ram has that blocky rectangular shape that is characteristic of a meat breed uh, sheep where you're looking to get a very large carcass, um, as big a carcass as possible on four little legs <laughs> as you can. Okay. And Any yeah, I have a question and it's probably everyone else probably knows that and I'm just being silly, but is the is the fleece that comes off of a male different from what comes off of a female? It can be. I mean, um, females, female fleeces um, are subject to all sorts of um, interruptions, um, depending on whether they're uh, pregnant or lactating or struggling, you know, to keep their weight up during pregnancy. Um, so actually many people who raise sheep for wool um, really do focus on the, on the rams. So um, in turn, it's not, uh, uh, that's a broad statement. It's not true of every person, but um, if you've heard the term weathers, those are castrated males. Um, they often, um, in my conversations with people who raise sheep, they often point to the weathers as being the ones that are their kind of, um, you know, store and trade. You know, their weathers have the ability to be more consistent um, year after year to produce really nice fleece. Um, they're not, they're not useful for breeding, but, um, if you are into, yeah, if you're into focusing on, on wool, um, they can be a really good, um, producer for you. 
So, that would make sense because their body's not being depleted when they get pregnant and all Exactly. That. I mean, the thing about fleece is that you can hold up a lock of fleece and you can see the history of the last year in it. If there's been a drought or, um, you know, sickness hmm. or mites or pregnancy or lactating or any of those things is it's like a timeline um, of the events of the year. And some of those things affect only the females. So yeah, their fleeces can be different. Interesting. Okay. And, I, and, and not to mention um, the fluctuation of hormones that occurs with any of those events is going to affect her fleece. Whereas males don't really have that, that hormonal fluctuation either. Right. Okay. Thank all you. the same human, all the same things that humans deal with. <laughs> Right. And please, anybody who knows more about sheep than me, please pipe up if I'm saying something wrong it's, or, or something that you feel like you need to argue with. Um, I, I, I'm not like the be all and all expert at all. Just I haven't read everything or know everything. So <laughs> anybody else have a question? I'm knitting with our barn box yarn today. <laughs> You're mean. <laughs> just kidding. Um, I'm just learning so much. I love it all. <laughs> yeah, and then I got to the end and I got to use number four on the last few rows and I'm in love with number four too. So now I have to wait <laughs> weeks to find out about it. No, number four is especially lush, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, really, I love the coloring of it too. It's like, yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. I actually have a weird question, Anne, um, or a request for Zach, maybe. Um, so for my kit yarns, um, since I'm not using them all, I'm doing something a little different with my kit. Would mm -hmm. it be possible for him to make some tags for these yarns? For um, us? I, don't, I don't know if you were listening when we, we did, we are, we have a plan to, um, make a downloadable sheet yeah. with all the label, the actual awesome. label. Yeah. Awesome. So you'll have the yarn labels that we made for all the skeins um, in one sheet that you can download and you could attach it to your extras or any full skeins that you have left. So awesome. Cause I've, I've ordered a couple of extras. So thank you. Especially yeah. I'm excited um, because my yarn, my sweater yarn and my Parendale is out for delivery. <laughs> so oh, I'm going to awesome. get it today. Yeah. I'm yeah, so we put your, we we put your sweater yarn in a box the other day. My number two extra yarn is out for delivery today too. I'm going. To, woo. And then the, the only new... other thing I want to ask is I want to see how Julie is feeling after her surgery. Exactly. Well, I'm not knitting today. I'm like a bit bored today. Oh my! Wow, look at you! But you're wearing a pretty sweater. No, that's the ice thing that Robin told me about and a t-shirt. Um, oh. It does. It looks like cables, doesn't it? It's just. It does. Thing. Totally. It looks like you're yeah. wearing your Skip Pullman. It's the, and I thought, it's, boy, you must be cold. <laughs> it, it's the wonderful ice thing that if Robin hadn't told me about, I don't know what I'd be doing. It's the best thing ever. So Hang in there. You look good. Yeah, the you doctor good. said, I asked the doctor about knitting and he said, as soon as I can hold, if I can have my arm in my lap, as long as it's not a heavy project, if I can do it, he, he's all for it. So he yes. wants me to- Don't forget, like, Robin was knitting a lot sooner than she thought she would be. Yeah, so, so I yeah. still, the nerve block is still active three days later. Um, Yay. <laughs> so, which is fine um, with me, but I can't hold the knitting needle yet. But the doctor said, as soon as I'm comfortable holding it, go for it, because it's good for my grip. and stuff but just not a project nothing more than two pounds but so, julie he thought it yeah. went like he wanted it to go yep he so, said that there was a big bone spur that was bigger than he expected so that was what was causing the majority of the problems oh. um and he repaired a few tears this is all from back in my crossfit days 
Mm. And uh, so I'm not going to be going back and doing that anytime soon, mm. but um, exactly. I'll, I'll do it for you. <laughs> Just speak it to I'm, I I'm can't not, watch people do snatches I'm anymore. I'm 65, so I'm, I'm a little smarter than that. I look at people and I go, I'm not in competition with anyone anymore. Yeah, when I was doing started really, nine years ago. I was crazy. Yeah, I was doing really heavy snatches and things. So I highly um, recommend Pilates. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm just glad you're good. Thank you. Glad yeah, you're so good. it's uh, I. He seems to be encouraging me, like he said, the sling is really for comfort. As like you can be out of it whenever. Just don't lift anything. Don't reach for anything. Um, and uh, knit when you can hold the needles. So, but then he was like, "Why would you knit?" He said, why would you knit? It's not winter. I said, you have to get ready for the winter. <laughs> now we have Clearly, to educate the world. Yeah. I swear yeah, to God. He clearly so. does not knit. No, <laughs> no. Clearly not yeah. a knitter. No. So, um, but there are all those people that go and play golf in the snow. And so, you know, <laughs> go for we it. Have those think- people, yeah. There's ice and golf. snow on the golf course and they're out there. <laughs> yeah, I'm a golfer. So I, on my, he gave me like a 26 week plan of physical therapy and everything. And that's still just like the, the starting thing, but golf, like initiate golf preparation starts in like week 18 or something. <laughs> so it's golf crazy. So he seems golf to know what he's wait. doing. So hmm? golf can wait. Yes. Um, and yeah. uh, but knitting cannot. I I had a uh, my family adopts cats. I have dogs. We have uh, both cats and dogs rescues, and we fostered a cat once. But a friend told us the cat was fine, but it came from a feral household. The mother was feral, but the cat. She promised me the kittens were not feral, and she said just foster it for a little while for us. I'm sorry. I'm I'm I don't have a video because I'm lazy. I have my <laughs> laptop upside down. <laughs> and if I had the camera on, you'd see me upside down. So I didn't put the video on today. Um, anyway, the, she promised me the kitten was fine. And she said, just isolate it from the rest of your family. So it got out one day. And my husband and I went chasing after it. And I grabbed it. And it sunk its teeth and claws into my hand. And <laughs> so... Once we got it separated and put it in a box and took it back to the my friend, my hand and arm swole up. And I had red streaks going up and down my arm. Mm. And I went to the doctor and he said, I'm putting you in the hospital. This is really serious. I said, no, nah, just give me some antibiotics. I'll be fine. And he said, and I told him, I said, the worst thing is I can't knit because my, hands, my hand was frozen. I couldn't move my fingers. And he said, you can't knit? And I said, yeah, it's, it's really weird. I can't knit. So <laughs> he said, I'm going to wrap you up. I mean, he gave me like an ace bandage type thing. And then and, and 10 days antibiotics. And I swear, if you do not take them all, I'm putting you in the hospital. So I thought I was fine after a few days. But he just, he, the look on his face when I said I couldn't knit was just priceless. Yeah. But uh, I was fine after 10 days of antibiotics. But some people just don't. Get it. don't get it yeah but i mean you know it, i was red streaks running on my arm and i couldn't move my fingers and i was complaining about knitting together <laughs> so of course they were nuts <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know doctor wanted to put me in the hospital and i couldn't knit so we had a disagreement yeah well hopefully i mean he seems to think it'll be good for me like, yeah. i think that's so, no, it will be Sorry about the timer. That's the healing, timer for healing, my eyes. Healing can cure a lot of things. Yep. I think it's good for your mental health too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, hopefully you'll be back up and swing, swinging when the Rhinebeck sweater knit along starts. Oh, we'll yes. see. I'll def- it'll definitely be something in pieces. I definitely can't knit like a heavy sweater. So, so I did. I did finish the three the week three clue Tuesday. As soon as we got it, I knit that right away because my surgery <laughs> was Wednesday. So I was like, I have to get this done before I have to put this all away. Because well, maybe, maybe you'll be knitting again by the next clue. <laughs> Two weeks. 
Yeah, then I'll have to weigh the, I'm doing the blanket though, so it can't be more than two pounds. So I have to keep track. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe you could do Anne's new worsted sweater. Yeah, I'll that have, I'll, I'll release soon. I'll, I'll, I think I'll probably start with a sock for whatever nah. I do first, just a plain stockinette sock that I don't care about just <laughs> to get my fingers moving because God knows what my gauge is going to be like so well, i think didn't robin weren't you knitting like your first or second sweater when you had your shoulder surgery i'm trying to remember i thought i worked on kaisa but i'm not yeah, sure you were doing sleeves or something right Ooh. Right. sleeves yeah so sleeves were good julie i'm i'm so glad yeah. you have that thing i'm so glad that ice thing the doctor didn't tell me about the ice thing what well, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about it's like a a cooler that you put ice and water in and it runs through hoses up over through this pad on my shoulder oh, it's, it's wonderful it's, yeah. it's wonderful the doctor didn't tell me about it so I called the doctor's office and was like people I said someone I know told me this was the best thing ever and she said uh the assistant said it's great but we don't we don't put it as required because the insurance won't cover it probably so we don't hmm. want to make people think they have to buy it but we can try to put it through so I said, yeah, I had looked up how much they cost. So I was like, put it through, see what the insurance will pay. It's worth it, I think. And so the insurance didn't cover it, but I got it anyway. And it's awesome. I can't, eat, I have to keep ice on it 20 minutes out of every hour. Mm. I don't, I can't even imagine trying to deal with ice from the freezer with that. So this thing's great. Mm. So thank you so much for the recommendation. Yes. And thank you for passing the word to others. Yeah, I've gotten so many good tips from people about all kinds of stuff. So <laughs> everybody has stories to share and I'm just I'm making the best of it. So, so I figured I'd drop in today and uh, learn about the sheep a little bit without any knitting. And, um, but I'm going to drop out now because yes. I have to move Get around a little self bit. Self-care. Yep. So, so my lunch has been made for me, so I'm going to go take advantage of that. Take care, Julie. Take care, Good Julie. Morning, Julie. Take care. All right. Yeah, you take yeah. care. Thanks. So with that lead in from Catherine, because the pictures didn't come through on Wednesday night, can you show the new sweater again? For those of us that might want to order yarn on sale. Yeah. Um, hang on. It's really pretty. The and are you knitting with the new barn box yarn? You wouldn't want to show it to us, would you? She won't. She's frozen, but she won't show it to us. Oh, sure. You know she won't show it to us. She doesn't. She likes to tease us. She's mean that way. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us I like to tease. So that's the pullover. It's unblocked here, so it doesn't look its its very best here. But that's the, Ooh, the crew beautiful. neck pullover. That's the crew I neck the pullover. Already. I need that. Um, and then let me get the let me get the um, picture of the um, cardigan. My yarn's already winging its way to me. I have to go back a, a little further for that. What yarn? Would so you that's um, that was the Apollo. Target okay. Tango Worsted, and that was the Apollado color. This is the Nuevo color. That's what I got the Nuevo. In the cardigan. And in a moment, I can bring up the pattern. Um, and tell you again. So for for these, I use approximately um, thirteen hundred yards of yarn. Okay. Let me let me make sure about that. I think that's right. 
Uh, oh, pretty. Yeah, approximately 1300 yards. And this is size small, the 41 inches around. So for every size up or down, you need to plan on approximately 125, 250 yards difference. Um, and this is a longer sweater. So the side seam is 17 inches. You know, if you want to make it shorter, then you would need a little less yarn. So, um, and you said the inches go up by five for each five size? inches. Yes. So the next so, size up would be 46. The next size down would be 36. So it goes like 36, 41, 46, 51, 56, 61. And you want to, um, what does it say here? Um, to fit with six to eight inches of ease. It is an oversized um, style. The, it has a saddle shoulder, which drops off the shoulder a little bit, no more than an inch. It's just a little shoulder drop there to give it that slouchy oversized look. So, you know, you could probably get away with wearing it a little tighter, you know, with less ease, like four to six inches of ease if you don't want something that has that much extra fabric. Is the pullover more of a tunic length also? It's 17 on the sides also? Yeah. The side. Okay. Yeah. Um, of course, you can make it any length you want. You know, um, I want to, I'm trying to remember now. Uh, I think I used two full skeins for the front and the back. each, you know, and then one full, about one full skein, maybe a tiny bit more for each sleeve. So I think that would be about right. That's about approximately 1300 yards of yarn, six skeins. And there's a V-neck, so there's a V-neck option for both the pullover and the cardigan. Pockets are optional. It was fun to knit though. It went, it knitted up so fast. <laughs> and the needles are size eight and 10. Oh. <laughs> Let me just see what the gauge is. Mm. The stockinette gauge on larger needles is 12 and a half stitches and 22 and a half rows equals four inches. And in the textured rib pattern, it's 16 stitches and 23 rows washed. And that's after washing both. Okay. Um, Anne, mm -hmm. can I ask a question about birds in the thicket? Uh-huh. Um, on the edge when you have a spined off three, um, do we bind off three, do we bind off according to what the stitch looks like or according to what that last edge stitch is? Yeah, I think you're always binding off in knit, if I'm not mistaken. So let me just open that pattern. Uh... But yes, according to what that last edge stitch is. So we just knit, we just knit. Yeah, them you're, off. You're, yeah you're always binding off in knit. Okay. Yeah, because it's a, the edging is garter based. So, mm -hmm. so every in the in the edging, every row is a knit row basically. Mm -hmm. And so you'll be binding off in knit. Yeah, I was 
I was wondering if you, the edging is supposed to look like a garter edging. Yes. But, well, oh, okay. Yeah. If you look at the chart, you, you see that there are alternating rows of plain white boxes and then boxes with dots. Yeah, that's the garter. Yeah, yeah so that's garter stitch. Thank you. You're welcome. And what would your new sweater that you were showing us look like in confection worsted? It would look fine. I mean, it, it's, you know, it would be similar. I haven't knitted in that, so. I just, know. I I knit with the other ones. I'm trying to do different yarns. Yeah, to test yeah. Out. And, you know, and, and, um, and it's a, a nice um, practical fiber too. It, it'll be, it'll be slightly smoother. So it wouldn't look as tweedy. Okay. It That's wouldn't nice. look as nubbly. So it would have a more consistent color all the way down. Um, but it would be really nice in that. And, and same for, you could knit it in any of the worsted yarns, you know, you could knit it in Kent worsted or, um, but confection would be a good choice. And you know, get it before it's gone. It's, <laughs> it's, that's why I was looking at it. <laughs> yeah, it's slowly but surely disappearing from the shelves. Now I have to decide a color. <laughs> that's always the hardest. Yeah, sometimes not. We don't have, uh, in some of the colors, I think we're pretty low, or if not out. So I'd need six gains at least. Mm. Nope, not in that one. If there's a color that you want that is showing up as sold out, you can always email or call the shop and we can see if we have it you know we might have it but it might be in our cushion or something okay not not the sofa cushion <laughs> <laughs> back up yeah david keeps a cushion because of you know places where orders can cross so we keep a five skein cushion usually on most things until we get down. Like, looks like the only one you don't have is cookies and cream. Yeah, I think cookies and cream sold out a long time ago too. Yeah, but there's other colors I love, so that's okay. Yeah. And do you think um, the goat fingering would work with the Ilias um, CS? Yeah, that I yeah, see? that would be really nice. Okay. Oh, Thanks. Ilias CS. I'm sorry, I yeah. was thinking. Uh, yeah, Elas, yes, yeah, I do. What other one were you thinking? I I I always get Costa Figuera mixed up with. It. Oh that, yeah, yeah. That does Perfect. take a slightly finer yarn, but okay. the um, yes, I think that would be really nice because the goat fingering tends to have a little heavier feel. Uh -huh. Like I think, yeah, I think it knits up a little bit more like a sport yarn. Personally, myself. Okay. Yeah, okay. it'd be nice, okay. and you'll have a nice drape. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's what I'm going to do. That'll be beautiful. What color are you going to get? Oh, probably the Michael. <laughs> <laughs> it's really such a beautiful color. It's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Are we shopping? We, well, it, we're thinking that so that we can shop. <laughs> well, there well, is the word sale out there, you know. I, know, I, did, I, gotta... I did leave because I got a notification that my yarn was delivered. <laughs> so oh, I ran what? outside to go get yes. it. Go oh, and tell, show and but tell. It wasn't my sweater yarn. It was my um, Perindale. Oh, very oh, nice. Oh, nice. So, and I got some Corydale because I love because it. The confection, it's one of my all-time favorites. So, 
that's what I was talking about making the new sweater with while oh, you were gone. I totally would. I wanted to make it out of that and I might end up getting some anyway. Um, I went back and forth. So I decided to do the Targi and then sleep on the confection because I already have a confection sweater, but mm -hmm. I was going to Debbie. So I say, go for it. <laughs> yeah, I just got done asking Anne about that. I have two different colors in my cart right at this moment. So I have- What colors? Uh, um, chocolate worst, dark chocolate worsted mm -hmm. or the nougat. Okay, so then, I did my sweater in the dark chocolate. I'll go get it just so you can ooh, see it. Ooh. So when I was on the phone earlier, I was on the phone because I am buying my son and his wife a baby Highland mini cow. <laughs> and they're all excited about it. So we'll have the long hair and it's a little baby one. And oh. now they're talking about getting goats to go with it. And I said, cashmere and mohair? <laughs> oh, well. look how pretty that is. So I don't know if you can see, Debbie, this is a worsted in the chocolate. It's a Thea Coleman pattern. Oh yeah. And um it's got that's amazing stout. grape. Chocolate stout. Yep. That's what I, I love my chocolate exactly, stout. Man. So yep. this one is the dark chocolate, so it would be darker than that. No, this is pretty dark. It's just my lighting. Oh, okay. But you can see like how great the stitch definition is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which yarn is that? This is the confection worsted. Confection worsted. And I love it. And it's very warm. It's fantastic, but it's a grandpa sweater and I did a bigger shawl collar and it cuts the wind. But I mean, I have worn this sweater a lot and you can see no pilling, very minimal. There was some little teeny bit of pilling at first, which happens with all sweaters, but um, right. it's been amazing. And the thing that I can't get over that's so amazing about bare naked wolves when they're not processed, they still have structure, but they can have this gorgeous drape. So flattering. And this sweater's a size too big. This was sort of the second sweater I knit. So um, I wish I had done one size smaller, but it's amazing. And yes. um, it's so soft. I often wear it when it's really cold here in North Carolina um, as like a robe in the winter because it just feels good even on my skin. It's just lovely, lovely, lovely yarn. So if you're, it's, um, similar to the Corydale that some of you might be knitting, knitting with. I well, love it. And it is yeah, the, extra, the Corydale. Yeah. Yeah. It is Corydale fiber. That is yep. hundred percent Corydale um, just from a different place. And we think maybe the new Corydale is coned, but I, I don't know for sure. I think the new Corydale feels um, like it's rounder and I don't know how to explain that. Um, yeah, I, I think it might be if it's the comb, comb. That, yeah, maybe it, if it's comb that makes the fiber denser, you know, it makes mm -hmm. puts more fiber in there and, um, that could, that could be it. So uh, I was looking at the cookies and cream color for potentially doing Anne's new sweater in it, but I had to choose. I couldn't go on one of my really classic sprees. It said they're out of, they only have one skein of the cookies and cream. I oh, so somebody must have bought it. So now I can't get it. I but if looked. you, but if you, what the if you call, is, if yeah. you, yeah, if you contact Barb, she'll let you know if we do have it. Uh, Janet, this sweater was um, a sweater I did um, when Anne first came out with the yarn and it is uh, one of Thea's, I think it was called Stout, right? Is that right, Anne? I think chocolate I named it chocolate out. stout or Talk. something. I made it too. And um, yeah, I have a little story. I was wearing this at my first Rhinebeck a long time ago. And Thea Coleman, I had been in a knit along with her. And she came and found me because um, I was working in a booth. And she fell in love with this yarn. And that's when she started designing with the yarn. She talked to Anne and she just like went bonkers over it, which I was surprised about. Because to be honest, I have one sleeve that's a little longer than the other. <laughs> but um, 
it was really cool because then she started really designing with all the yarn, the bare naked yarns. And um, I just think it's awesome. <laughs> I really love her uh, recent sweaters she did and the bare naked yarns too. But I still love Anne's sweaters better personally. So I haven't knit another one of Thea's since then. But that's just me. I'm I, found this, I found the construction of the sleeve on that sweater rather peculiar. It was difficulty with it, but I well, still love the sweater. And I've got a chest and I find personally that having a more tailored sweater, the way Anne designs just suits me better. Mm -hmm. Having a better fit in the shoulders. And um, I always get stopped when I'm wearing one of Anne's sweaters, not so mm -hmm. much when I wear another one. <laughs> so that just tells me all I need to know. <laughs> when I was working on my Ela Cies, um, I was waiting at physical therapy to go into my appointment and someone stopped me and said, you know, you could sell down on Instagram. People sell sweaters on Instagram all the time for a couple hundred dollars. I said, sweetie, that wouldn't <laughs> even cover the cost of the yarn. Yeah, right. <laughs> on my time. <laughs> no, yeah. you know, that's like, you can't afford me. <laughs> and like, I would want to get rid of something I worked that hard on. Exactly. Never, ever, ever, ever. Yeah. That always befuddles me when people just assume that when you knit, your first thought about everything you knit is, is how can I unload this as fast as possible? <laughs> you know, and, and how can I get 50 cents for it? Like, <laughs> well, and they have no idea. I think, I don't know if this is true for the rest of you, but everybody I've met who tends to unload everything they knit they knit with like acrylic. <laughs> you know? Yeah, of course so you want to unload it. It's paradoxical to me, but whatever. <laughs> but they go, oh, I just got the best yarn at Michael's. <laughs> I went to Joe yeah. Ants for my yarn. Yeah. Oh, well. I hear you, Debbie. I hear you. It's all Ann's fault. We're addicts. <laughs> No. Actually, I consider myself a higher artist, not an addict. <laughs> I've leveled up. That's the way Pre I look at it. Precisely, yeah. Catherine. I yes. like that answer. I like that. Yes. Because we're working with luxury grade, you know, rare yarns. We're doing really incredible quality knits that people just don't make commercially anymore. You know, that absolutely fit you so, when you're done with it. They fit. <laughs> and I will tell you, like I was looking on Farfetch, that luxury retailer from because I was researching it for stock. And um stock. it blew me away the amount of sweaters that were similar to the kind of thing that we're knitting. And they were like six, three thousand dollars. And they're all machine knit. They don't look as good as what we make. But I was like, yeah, I am a high level artist. <laughs> I don't Absolutely. do the designing. I mean, I'm painting by numbers, but I'm still high level. I, you know. I'm a good follower. I'm not a designer. <laughs> I, I pick a good designer and I follow. Yes. I remember the first time I knit with Bare Naked. Um, it was before it was called Better Breakfast. Do you remember that, Anne, when you first oh, the breakfast, breakfast put it blend. into breakfast club? blend? Breakfast blend. Before have it was that. called there, it was before it was called. Yeah, we um, still have breakfast blend in stock. Um, so I mean, before good. it was even called. No, it was before you even it, you put it into a club, and it was before it was actually called. Yeah, we put it in the club and named it be breakfast blend. Yes, and I said this is the best yarn I've ever knit with. <laughs> And I said, I'm going to buy everything I can out of this yarn. And I still, that's still my favorite. And I knit everybody, I, everybody I know gets socks out of it for their birthdays. Mm -hmm. And it, um, I do it is really, it is really good sock yarn, I have to say. Oh, and it lasts forever. I mean, the, the people, they wear it out. I mean, over years and years. And they say, I need more socks. <laughs> oh, yeah. They get, they get more socks. And Even my daughter-in-law, who is allergic to wool, asks for it. I mean, she says she's allergic to wool. And I think it's because she had an, at some point in the past, she had somebody scratching wool. Mm -hmm. Says, oh, that's the best socks I've ever had. 
Well, and some people are reacting to, you know, the plethora of chemicals that are on so many wools, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's plenty on most commercial yarns to be reacting to besides the wool itself. Yes. Again, now, are very... you, are you, are you Carol Cairns? Is your last yes, name? I am. Oh, okay. Hi, Carol. Um, hi, yes. hi, <laughs> Carol is a long time and anyone who, who participates in the Ravelry group knows Carol. She's yes. been around. Yes. Yeah. I tested it for you years and years ago. Yeah. So yep. Yep. I did. I think I did the David sock. Mm -hmm. And but, I do no. have a question on the breakfast blend, not the better, not the better uh -huh. breakfast breakfast blend is it dehaired also no that's the difference that's what i was thinking so okay. better breakfast is dehaired and um but it's it's really not i mean oh it's gorgeous yeah I'm making a blanket yeah, I out of it wanting it if it wasn't dehaired because i would love yeah. to try and knit with some that's not dehaired yeah you, if, nice. if gonna, i mean if anything is going to be comparative it will be those two because um you're not, you're still not going to find a lot of hair in it. It's the level of hair in alpaca fiber is directly related to the grade of alpaca that, so really low grade alpaca is going to be full of hair. And that's something that they, it's just a sorting thing really. And, um, and high grade alpaca is going to have very little hair, but even at that, um, de-hairing it, um, does make it really nice and and much less quote allergenic although although having the hair doesn't make it doesn't or it's not an allergy related thing i guess mm -hmm. no again and people yeah. who say i can't stand wool or i'm allergic to wool it's because they have different ideas about wool from the past yeah and I, or, you know, or they, they really are reacting to the I mean, new stuff. Or they really are reacting to something, but it's not the wool. It's yeah, it's something else that's in it. So I proselytize for wool. I mean the good stuff. <laughs> well, I mean we've had numerous people with sensitive skin give us feedback on our yarns, and you know we get a lot of good feedback from people who um swear that they're allergic to alpaca or that they're allergic to wool or that they break out in hives you know that we we do get a lot of positive experiences on the part of people who generally consider themselves sensitive yeah and out of all the five club yarns or the mystery wool long yarns would any of them be suitable for a pair of socks? Well, they are um, DK weight. So, yep. yeah. Um, I mean. I'm thinking heavyweight socks for like skiing or, or skating or something. Or just like almost like a slipper sock. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I made sport weight socks for David and I think they're really thick. So. Yeah. I, I tend to think, you know, no. that's, that's heavy enough, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. but, um, just cause getting them over the heel, it starts to get really stiff if it's too thick, but, oh, then right. there was, but then there was that desire that made those worse away socks for Festivus a couple years ago, <laughs> which was kind of crazy, but a lot of people ended up converting those into leg warmers because they were so thick. Yeah, I forgot um, about that. Yeah. But some people like really heavyweight socks. Yeah. My son only likes slipper socks. He doesn't yeah. like slippers. So, I mean, I would say that the Kent would wear well, and the fifth yarn would probably be a good choice. Mm -hmm. Um, but the Kent and the Perindale would be less um, prone to shrinking or anything like that, you know, uh, and felting. So anything that's prone to felting is going to shrink on you, and that can yeah. make for a, a stiff, uncomfortable sock. Yeah. 
Well, that's something I never would have thought of. So there, I go and learn something again. Thanks. Yeah. So, so you want to look for, you want to look for yarns that are, uh, resistant to felting and shrinking. Hmm. So the long wools, the, the Kent and the Perindale would be good prospects for that. Um, I have to say that my husband really likes a good warm sock and I tell him to get it wet and wear it in his boot so it felt precisely to his foot. Mm -hmm. And he loves that. And that is the warmest and the strongest wearing when he does that. Yeah, because that's almost yeah. like a boot, boot liner that he's creating. Yeah. 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 And, and and the Targi, the Targi yarn makes a, the Targi Sport makes a really nice, thick feeling sock that is still lightweight and um, wick, a really good wicking. You know, it, it pulls moisture away from the skin and keeps you warm. And, and I know Audrey made a couple pair for him out of that yarn, right? I did. Yeah. And the, unfortunately, he's not uh, the best at toenail management, and I have to <laughs> mend a hole. <laughs> Say no more. Yeah. California Ann, what, yes, color, was, what color was that better, that breakfast blend you just were holding on to? Um, this is, let me check for a second which one I'm using right now. I'm working on the the blank the, the strip blanket oh. because I've already finished my clues for the current blanket. So um, let's see here. This one is this is flapjack. Okay. Oh, I love flapjack. And yeah, I really like the the old breakfast bl breakfast blend just fine. I mean, better breakfast has a lot to be said for it too, but they're just different. Yeah. Well, I've been wanting to try it for a really long time, so I may just bite the bullet, but I was looking at the bakery rye. I did oh, some of that. I did a strip of that, that too. Do I, I see just it? did my, my sun socks I did in bakery rye. I did a sweater in that. I did Anne's yeah, uh, Anne, Anne, why, don't hold, why don't you hold up all your colors so people can see? She, I think she's got like five shades. She's running. Yeah. <laughs> Are you getting the DK? Yes. Just be um, be aware. I mean, it says it right in the listing, but that old breakfast blend has less yardage than the new better breakfast blend. So it's slightly it thicker. What? I thought it said 220. Is that right? No, that would be worse. Um, it's probably like 260 or 250. 220 on my old my old labels here. That's what it says. On oh, it does say 220? Okay. 220. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know this so was when we were working with the mill that was doing whatever they wanted with our ah. yard. So, um, yeah, just That's be careful. That's what one? The bakery This is the bakery rye. rye. Okay. And then this is what they look like together. So you can see that the uh, flatjack is quite a bit. Yeah, flatjack is much lighter. I think, I think you're right out of the of the really dark look. brown. Yeah, I we don't have that. The last yeah. of that. Yeah, that was the first color to sell out. The burnt toast, or whatever we called it. Yeah, but, it's really lovely stuff. I love that they're all food. Yeah, yeah. they're all breakfast food. Yeah, yeah. make me. And the other one is oatmeal. Them. Right? Yeah. There's a lighter yeah. one oatmeal. Yeah, this was another one where um, we got our club yarn in two shipments, and one shipment was like a totally different color than the other ship. So Ooh. some people so some people got oatmeal and some people got flapjack and had yeah. to duke duke it out with each other. Yeah. Over. So that's the oatmeal. Would you rather have pancakes or would you rather have oatmeal? <laughs> They're oh, both pretty. They're both pretty. They both taste good. Well, <laughs> I don't know about the yarn. Yeah. I like all of those. Those are all yeah. beautiful colors. Oh, yeah, I can't and, go wrong with any of them. And any of them would look nice on you, Debbie. Okay. Thank I you. mean, I think the I think the bakery rye or the flapjack would be your best bet. That's what They're I really would nice. have a tendency to go towards. 
the oatmeal reminds me just a touch of reindeer. And since I have the reindeer already, I'm trying to stay away. Agreed. From yeah. Yeah. Agreed. It's kind of close to that. Okay. Sheila? Sheila? Yeah. And I'm, um, I'm looking on the website right now and I'm trying to figure out of the stone suit fingering, which of the darkest colors are less brown or more black? The stone soup comes in only one color. It's five shades of one color. So the, the color doesn't vary between, it's a gray brown leaning toward gray. You know, it's not like super warm. Yeah. Uh, and it's just five shades from light to dark of that same color. So it's really my personal preference if I should get slate or river rock. Correct. Yeah. I mean, the river rock is really dark. Probably not great for knitting at night. Yeah, it's not that bad. I mean, uh, it's it would be totally up to you what your situation is in terms of light. It is. I mean, it is a black brown. So, yeah. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Sit under an ot light. That's what I do. What do you do? Sit under an ot light. Do you know what ot lights are? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I might get one of those one day. That might be a Christmas present. They are not cheap, but they are really, really helpful for dark yarns. How do you spell it? O T T. And I think they I got do mine from on Amazon because I couldn't find one in my local uh, yarn store or local they craft do store. Have, like they sell them at Joanne and you know, Joanne. Yeah, has, unfortunately I don't have one very close. And Joanne has those coupons that you can use. So yeah, you can, yeah, I wish I had a Joanne closer to me, but I ended up buying mine on Amazon. And but they're wonderful because they have day a natural is a week light. Away. <laughs> yeah, they have a natural light feature, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. It's not as comfortable, but last night I pulled out my camping headlight yeah. to you. Yes. So oh. I wear it upside down so I can tilt it down yes. farther. Yes. So that I works a, a um, If I can't use my outlet, I have a flashlight that goes around my neck. <laughs> Do I have tools for it as a knitter? Um, <laughs> it's a flashlight that's a bendy flashlight mm -hmm. that goes around your neck. Yeah. I have one of those too. Like a necklace, yeah. Yes, it's good for black for blackouts because we have those in California too. And if you're doing renovations on your house, like we have been for 20 years, um, <laughs> you can just you can just request lighting design that favors your knitting chair. Absolutely. <laughs> Which is what we've done everywhere. I have to approve all the lighting plans that they Absolutely. are that they are knitter friendly um, before we can put them into action. I love your kitchen, Anne, by the way. Oh, thank you. I love my kitchen too. It it we renovated this part of the house about seven years ago. And it really turned out nice. And it was so bad before. It was such a stinking hole of the kitchen before. <laughs> uh, but I really like the way it came out. It's, yeah, with your garden, you need a lot of prep space. Yeah. The size of that butternut squash back there is huge. Oh, you know what? That's my mom gave us that when we were visiting her, and I still haven't, I still haven't done anything with it. Oh. She just wanted to get rid of it. She didn't really. <laughs> I don't, I actually don't think it's any good. The funniest thing when, well, there was nothing funny about the pandemic, but uh, when people started be being in their home and you would watch them, I yeah. started watching behind people's heads to see what they're behind, what they wanted to have behind their heads. And I started like, I would read their book jackets behind their heads or see what they had on their pictures on their walls and it was just a very intimate way to get to know people 
uh, since they were broadcasting from their homes. And I thought that at least that small part was kind of interesting when we got to know people a little differently. Yeah, and yep. so many people realized they had to start cleaning up their space a little. <laughs> Offices got a lot nicer then. I also was in a meeting once and just as an icebreaker, the instructor was like, what is right outside your box? So like, oh. you know, we're, we're all in a box. And so like, what's <clears throat> the next thing outside? <laughs> And of course, it's my knitting. <laughs> I like, started pulling out all my projects I had going, all my new yarn. Or what funny. are you looking down at all the time? Right. Or yeah, like what's what's behind your camera? What are you yes. looking at? And I'm curious with the yarns in the mystery knit along, do they have colors or are they still unique that they don't need color names? Um, yeah, for the most part, we're calling them like natural cream, natural dark, just like that. If we decided to bring one in at the line, you know, as a new line, we'd have to, you know, work that out. Right. Um, it's it's interesting with the Perrindale and the Kent to be like, oh yeah, it's gray, but then you have two grays, and it's like, well, wow. yeah. well, the Kent is a an existing line, so we okay. gave the, the an official name, the Folkstone. Yeah. Gotcha. What's up? Do you need to go out? Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're hungry. <laughs> she did go out before I started. She was outside before I started, just FYI. No. I have to say that I love pattern one for the detailing and stuff, but I am so happy to be on to number two. <laughs> <laughs> I hear ya. I, I love knit pearl patterns myself. This number four is amazing. I just started it. Woohoo! Great way. Woo! I want that pattern now. I finished up to the end of that of pattern three. I'm tempted to start with the pattern one over again and then just do something else with the new pattern. <laughs> yeah, I love four too. It's like I Oof. don't have any idea of what it is at all. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I think it's completely different than anything we've had. But I could be wrong. <laughs> and just smiles, a big <laughs> smile. Just have to wait. You're, you're, trying wait. To get, you're trying to get me to say something. <laughs> no, no, I like the mystery of it. So do I. Yeah. I'm one of those no spoiler girls on the barn box. Oh, yeah. So there's one. <laughs> Catherine's I'm also a no spoiler, I think. Yes, yeah. there's three. I'm a no spoiler. I'm a no spoiler too. I, yeah, I, I'm sure. the one at, at the holidays where I don't want to open my present until, even if you put it out a month early, I would not open it. <laughs> yeah, I that's good. I'm glad there's some yeah. people like that. That's me. And I, and I, uh, this year I actually went months without opening a few of my presents because I wanted to open them. Well, I was talking to my friends who gave them to me. So that yeah. took it took like quite a while to catch up with Kim, 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 and then um, yeah. 
Catherine too, I can't remember what day we actually got together to open presents, but I did have a little pile of presents here for a while. <laughs> yeah. That's fun, I, got, I think. The, the, the mystery of what might be in there. Yeah. I also, got that, I, also I, I treat myself on a, like, a, like, on a, you know, it has to be a day when you feel like, I really need a treat or whatever. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> and then open. <laughs> I, yeah, I got two Advent um, fiber boxes for spinning. And I waited oh. until March to open them. I because I kept going, oh, I have something fun. <laughs> That's great. The games we play. Yes. On a slightly different note, and I appreciate the fact that you have the knit companion. Well, you have the the uh, stack way that uh -huh. we can download the pattern, so yes. that I just can keep adding the uh, new clues and yeah, add this one place on Knit Companion where all the clues are added one at a time. So yes. I don't have this like this scattered pattern all over the place on my Knit Companion. They're all there together. I appreciate that. I appreciate the thought that went into that. Well, we have uh, we have two different camps of people in, in terms of Knit Companion and non-Knit Companion. So apparently the separate clues are better for Knit Companion is what my understanding was that um, I have patterns. I have many, many knit companion patterns. And this way I can just look at the one and they're all right there together. That's my mm -hmm. take on it. And I know other people like it different ways. I like the choice. And I knit don't companion knit has companion, been a boon over the years. I don't use Knit Companion, but I use another app where it's also just much easier to add the new clue yes. than to try to pull things out from the, the compiled one. What do you use? Uh, I use an iPad app called Notability. Mm. Um, and then I, I have all kinds of notes in there as well as my, my knitting pattern notes. Mm -hmm. So it allows you to add notes, much like Knit Companion does, mm -hmm. just to specialize or to, so you can come back to it sometime later and say, oh, this is what I did. That's helpful. Knit Companion has saved me a lot of paper over the years. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've printed out a knitting pattern in probably eight years. <laughs> wow. When I first started knitting, I printed everything out and put it in binders and had, you know, the tabs all set up and I had like two shelves worth in my bookcases and don't do that anymore. I did on the bright side, Anne, you, I, I donated all of those binders to my local library. So oh, that I can have those, all those binders for a, a leap to lend out. So they did yeah, and, go and um, places like senior centers where people don't use devices or digital forms that as much are is another good thing to do. Yeah. So then I converted everything to my knit companion. Hi, Peanut. Where's she go? She's under the chair. She's under the chair. It says do not copy on the top, on, on the outside. I did not, I told people they could not copy the best, just borrow them. Mm -hmm. Riley, eat your food. Riley's creating drama lately by not 
getting started on her meals. So it takes her like half an hour to start eating her food. She, she circles her bowl. She finds something else to do. And then once she starts eating, she's fine. So there's nothing wrong with the food or anything. It's just, no. you know, rescues. I've had two rescue dogs. And you know what they do sometimes is they pick up the food in their mouth and they walk away from the bowl and drop it. She does that too. She throws yeah. it all over the place. <laughs> and then eat it somewhere else. And I always wonder if that's because they've been in a place where they had to fight for their food. Yeah. My Yorkie does that and he wasn't a rescue. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> no. Yorkies are just sorry. Yorkies yeah. are just special. <laughs> he literally will take his food out and then he'll flip it in the air and bat it around <laughs> like it's a cat. <laughs> so I call him my cat dog. It's like they don't have enough control at the tip of their beak and they need to get it back in their mouth and they can't, the tongue is so long that they can't get it back there efficiently. So they just throw it back. You know? Yeah, it's like, bro. <laughs> Amazing. It, it's pretty disgusting, actually. <laughs> and then, and then you know, it, it, laugh at him. It's, a, it's all over the, it's all over the floor. So the other dogs are just, hovering because they can't wait to get uh, to get over there and like clean it all up but they need well, Riley to wasted. walk away before <laughs> yeah yeah um I have a cat who has to wear a cone right now while he's healing and he has like for the first week or so, he would place his cone around his food bowl and it was just fine. But then something changed and he's now decided that the best way to do is just like scoop his cone directly through the food so that it's like a tunnel <laughs> bringing the food to his mouth. I've seen dogs do that with snow. They get they go out in the snow and they scoop up their snow with their with their e-collar and <laughs> very inventive yes yeah well he had the, he's restricted to only dry food now because of this <laughs> it was that would be pretty yucky it was a little much with the wet yeah. food yeah i was watching the news last night and um i saw an ad for some new animated movie coming out with super superheroes dogs so it's as if oh uh, yeah it's all the dogs that yeah. like batman's yeah. dogs superman's dog and then it's a movie <laughs> about the dogs and i don't normally go for movies like that but it actually looked pretty funny i have to admit <laughs> yes. is it animated yeah, i don't know what it's called movie. but it's coming out soon i think it's, it's called animated. super i think it's called super dogs Superhero. <laughs> yeah. Don't give so much I mean, more than we give them the, credit for. The, the trailers I've seen, the the dog characters remind me of the ones that are in Isle of Dogs, if you've seen that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which had some really good um, actors' voices in it. Like Brian oh. Cranston was in it. And Isn't that <laughs> Wes Anderson's? Yeah. Isle of Dogs, yeah, and it's yeah. supposed to be in Japan. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that one yet. It was okay. The story isn't. The story is pretty lame. But the the dogs, I agree. Yeah. the dogs are pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's amazing the difference that the actors' voices can make uh -huh. whoever they pick. Yeah. My dogs know so much. They pick up on so much. If I'm going to go outside, if I pick up my purse, my dog face plants. I mean, and, you know, just throws her legs against my leg. And she's just convinced I'm never coming back. So. Oh, yeah. If I pick it's, up. It's, the, touch my purse. I, that's it. If I pick up the keys for the shop. Off the steps where I keep them. The dogs come running from wherever they are. Three floors yes. up, you know. Because they know I'm going to the shop, which is where Barb lives and Lillian and otherwise, a them. A a a a.k.a. the tree dispensers. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes. 
Yeah. Did I mention the Chihuahua joke? I can't remember. <laughs> um, my, my dog is a terrier Chihuahua mix, you know, like 10 pounds of dog. And um, so a friend of mine said, you know what they say about Chihuahuas? And I said, if, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody hears it, however, 500 miles away, a Chihuahua barks. <laughs> and that's pretty much true for little dogs. Because our dog tells us if anybody's gotten out of a car, if the postman is nearby, if, you know, if anything happens in the neighborhood, our dog barks. So, yeah, we always know. It's funny, my Yorkie only barks if he's inside because he's protecting the house. But if he's outside oh. in the yard and someone walks by, he never barks at him. Yeah. So it's just his territory that he's protecting. Yes. Well, yeah. And if we're going for a walk, you know, I mean, all heck breaks loose if we're, if a dog is walking up to us. Big dogs, you know, if it's a big dog, this huh. big dog could eat my little dog for lunch. But, you know, territorial. <laughs> Yeah, cardigan always comes running when I, our refrigerator has a special <coughs> drawer for the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and if I open that drawer, she comes running. Yeah. Or if I, if I take out the peanut butter jar, it doesn't matter if I take out anything else, but if I take out the peanut butter jar, she knows <laughs> it. She oh, yes. Yeah. So if I take a piece of cheese out, the dog knows I'm going to give her a little piece. So I take out the cheese and I hand her a little piece and then I put the cheese, I start to put the cheese away and then she's like, oh, we're done. And she turns and walks away. <laughs> Dogs are so smart. <laughs> or they've trained us, I guess. Uh-huh. Hey folks, I'm gonna go. It stopped raining, so I best get out there and walk. <laughs> hey, walk Have for it. me too, okay? All Helen. right. Here. <laughs> nice one. See ya. I should say. Did you hear the word bark? Walk, I mean, did you hear that? <laughs> uh -oh. He up and walked over to me like, did I hear walk? Does yes. he like walks, Debbie? Yeah, he'll go. He's gone on five mile walks with me before. He loves to walk unless yes. it's hot outside. Yeah, he's not they're good with hot. Same thing with, uh, they're, they're really good hikers and stuff. People take their Yorkies everywhere. Yeah. But Backpack yeah, Riley, Riley doesn't like the heat. Yeah, he doesn't him. like the heat either. He'll find the nearest shade and lay down. And, and lay down. <laughs> and be well, like, I have a backpack that I bought him that if I'm out and about and I want to keep going, I can pick him up and hook him into it. Oh. Um, and then he can see out. Um, I don't use it nearly as much as I probably should. I just sometimes just torture him. <laughs> <laughs> I keep meaning to do that, but but it's so hot when I walk the other dogs. I can't imagine having another dog on me. On you? <laughs> yeah. To carry around. But yeah. David will take her like when it's when it's super freezing cold and he takes them out in the beginning of the day and the end of the day for their little potty walk he'll he'll put her in a um side bag a messenger bag um for half of the walk so just her head That's is tied yeah that's not attached to her then she, she's not attached to his back which sounds yeah like yeah so he takes her out like that and then she gets down halfway and she's much better walking home than she is walking away so interesting they're all like that. They they will stop and mosey on the way out, outward bound. But when we're heading home, they get more and more intent on just getting there. Yeah. yeah. They know the way home. Yeah. And mine's just the opposite on coming home. He meanders as slow as he can. Like a <laughs> three-year-old that doesn't want to go to bed. He then doesn't want to go yeah. home. <laughs> yeah. He wants to stay out longer. I don't know that it's, I mean, they love walking. They're always ready right away to go for another walk, but they know food is, is at the end of the walk usually, so. Right. It's already 82 degrees here though. So I, I don't know that we're going out in 82. Of course, it's getting up to 90. So I guess if I'm going, I need to do it. This is the <laughs> part. <laughs> It, 
it, it actually ended up a little cooler today than I thought it was going to be. <clears throat> we might go early since tonight it's bound to be lots of fireworks outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're supposed to rain late this afternoon, maybe. I, I wish I, it would rain. Yeah. We haven't had well, rain when, since I can remember. Yeah, when they say it's going to rain, it doesn't. <laughs> Well, we're concerned because on Monday, of course, there'll be a lot of fireworks. Yeah. And we haven't had rain in California since I can remember. So everything's just dry. On Wednesday, when you were talking about rain, it made me think my my son has his theater degree and he moved to California when he after he got out of college. And he brought home a beautiful woman. That's what he brought back from California was a beautiful Well, good for him. <laughs> But she was so excited. The first thunderstorm we ever had, she was jumping around out in it because she said, we don't have these kind of things in California. No, we don't. Well, so occasionally we'll have a great big, well, growing up in California, we have thun, what we call thunderstorms. And I went to visit family in Texas and those are thunderstorms. Yeah, I mean, that's what ours are. Lightning covers the thunder. whole sky and, you, you know, oh, those are yeah. thunderstorms. But, you know, it, it just gets so dry here. And then we're afraid of, of uh, fires all the time. Sure. Well, and didn't you say you were in Sonoma or Napa? In Napa, Napa Valley. Yeah, it makes me think of the fires recently in Napa. Oh, yeah. We had to evacuate once uh, from a fire. It and, just hurts my heart because I love that area. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah, it is. And, and you know, and it's been okay. But some days it feels like California is burning down. It just, yeah. I mean, when the, we had a fire and we weren't in danger, but the Scott, the, we lost all our power and we couldn't breathe, which is fairly significant. And so we had to evacuate wow. just because they warned us. And because, you know, you can't breathe and you have no power, you might as well go somewhere else. So are you close to Yachtville? Yeah, we are in the city of Napa. North Napa, and we're about 10 miles south of Yachtville. Yachtville is one of my favorite trips I've ever taken. Yes. Well, it's amazing for a tiny little town. Yes. It's got about five of the best restaurants that anybody's ever heard of. Five star restaurants. Absolutely. Yes. Well, one Thomas Keller has, I think, three of them. And the French Laundry is there. So I was trying people, to remember the names of them, but they were just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah. We were able, fortunately, to go to the French Laundry once for our 30th wedding anniversary. And it's one of those evenings that's just stands going to stand out like a great memory in your, in your life, you know. Right, right. And, of course, you have to save 30 years to afford it, but, you know, it, it was just <laughs> wonderful. But that makes it all the better because it's not something you can do all the time. No, I, no. And then, it, you know, it's you. We took my son and daughter-in-law and our daughter's a real foodie. So every time they served us, she took a picture of the plate and posted it, you know, on social media. It was really funny. Yeah. But no, we love living here. So just so I'm clear, we're meeting on Wednesday, yes? Yeah, just like okay. today. There's no new clue, but we'll just meet, um, goof off. <laughs> and when will you talk barn box, and What's that? When will you show us the barn? When can we talk barn box? When it's after the 17th. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. it's only the first. Wait. Yeah, yes. we still have a couple of weeks for barn box. Hmm. Um, so the barn box chat will probably we talked about this already, but 
the 17th is a Sunday, so the bar mob shot will probably be on the 24th. Um, just to give everybody a chance to have gotten their yarn and downloaded yeah. their patterns and stuff like that. Okay. I guess we'll wait. I'm the person well, who likes spoilers. <laughs> okay, I promise to post a picture as soon as mine arrives on the spoiler thread, but probably okay. Elizabeth will get hers sooner. They I'll are being forward, forward to it. I know, I know they're going out. David, when do they go on Monday? Um, the International Farm Box? Probably Tuesday. Tuesday is the 5th, so that's yeah. the first shipment, and then the week later is the domestic but Anne gets hers with the first shipment because she's special. Of course. As I answered but anyway, though, the, so I'll, the I, thread, I always mostly. look forward to, I'm, I'm a like spoilers and I look forward to exciting things like that to come. And every barn box shipment has been wonderful. They are. Yeah, we're, um, we're really thrilled with it, with being able to do it and We've got a, a lineup of exciting things that we're working on for next year. <coughs> Bar's like, there's too many yarns for barn box next year. I'm like, don't forget, we have to do the wool along again. <laughs> what kind oh, of you said you have Festivus already, right? Yeah, we do. Festivus is in the designers. It's been shipped to the designers. So are you... Are you counting on roughly the same number of patterns this year? Uh, yeah, it'll be like, I think we have 10 or 11. Okay. And we have some wonderful participating designers. Can we get it in book form again? Yeah, the whole, it'll be like last year. The ebook is, is really successful for us, for the fundraising and everything. It, it's kind of a runaway success in terms of that. So yeah, we'll keep doing that. Oh, that good. was so much fun last year, Anne. Yeah, yeah. And we'll do the I, we'll do the knit along just like we we've been doing. That's also really nice. I love knitting with the reds and greens. That was great. Uh huh. I was just thinking about was it um, worsted that the Red Festivus came in last year? Well, it was it was it fingering and worsted, fingering and worsted, and worsted. Mm -hmm. for both all the colors, right? So I wonder if the worsted worked for the new Rhinex sweater. Um, possibly. <laughs> Since it's super wash and silk, that would be my only worry. Yeah. No. Um. It, um. I think it would work. Yeah. The yardage will be similar. I'm trying to remember what the yardage is. Yeah, and I don't remember how many I have. I'll have it's to not it's not one of our usual yarns. So so it is a natural yarn, but it's not one of our usual yarns. Um so I I think the yardage is really similar to what our worsteds would be. And the consistency of the fiber would be very much in keeping with the fiber that I use. So I think, I think it would be safe. Um, and what is the name of your Rhinebeck sweater again? It's called Naughty Pine. And is there a is it on the website for yarn? Um, how much yarn to buy for each size? Is that on there yet? Or no, no, no. What do you the, think? I sh what do you recommend um, for the Targi worsted um, for a like a th so three or I, four? For size? the sample sizes, I use about thirteen hundred yards, about six skeins, and for oh, yeah. every and the size increments are five inches uh, to be. Oh worn. yeah, that's right. You said that. Yeah, to be worn with six to eight inches of ease. And then the um, between sizes, you would need, the difference is usually between 100 and 150 yards per size. Okay. And that's just really general because I, de I don't have it at my fingerprint, fingertips. 
I actually do have the graded pattern, but it's on my computer. It's not on any of my devices right now. So. <laughs> okay. You use six, you said, Ann? I use six. Yeah, I used about yeah, 1,300 okay. yards. It would be about six days. Yeah. Now I'm realizing I probably didn't order enough because I'm a bigger size. You know, when you ordered, I was like, hmm, that's not, you know, if you want to make the length the same, that's probably not enough. Okay, I'm going to order it right now. Sorry. I no, it's okay. Yeah. That's all right. I was over there filling your order and thinking, hmm, should I? <laughs> and be sure to put your lot number. I think we only have one lot, but be sure to add that. Oh, I don't know what the lot number is because I have I didn't get the sweater yarn yet. Or just say you want to match the lot from your previous order. Okay. Susan won't won't forget. So we have a new person to help with shipping and inventory and watch and customer service and her name is Susan and she's really good <laughs> she's not a knitter she's not a knitter but um she's really working out well so we're not a knitter that. yet right just like everybody who works for us it's not a knitter yet <laughs> It is kind of funny that we have so many non-knitters. Excuse me, sorry. Well, this was a lot of uninterrupted knitting time, but I think I'm going to go and see you all on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah I'm going to um, close up shop too. Yeah. Bye bye, time. everyone. Go bye. have a Bye. 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 Have a great Fourth of July. Yeah, same. See you, see you Wednesday. Bye bye. Bye.